Oh, we're live now. There you go. That might have backed up. Or maybe it reloaded. Hello, hello. We're here at 6.30, right? Pr prompt and on time. Where is everybody? Come on board. And um, if you're tuning into this after the video is posted, um, you'll be hearing this right from the beginning and hearing me talk to you now. You don't need to comment back, you know, if I ask somebody, are you hear me? Or if I ask a question, if you're seeing this after the live video is posted, that means we're not live anymore and I can't respond to you. So um, that's just the way live videos work. If you don't hit it at the time when it's live and you come back, thank heavens it's there. You can watch it later. Hooray. But you can't comment back to me and I can't have any interaction with you at that time. So that's why it's great and important that if we have people that come in to watch the show and participate that we can have everybody have that back and forth dialogue. So again, to reiterate, for those who may come in after the live presentation, because this video will be posted and out there, um, don't try to respond back after the end of the show. You can post your comments down below and please do. But um, don't expect interaction back and forth after the video is ended from me in the video. And I see a lot of people that gets confusing for some people. So um, hopefully that straightens some things up. Going to uh, talk through a couple things and hopefully get uh, some more people to come on to the show. I see we have one live viewer out there. Hooray! Um, really am encouraging participation today, whether you're writing comments or... Anybody who wants to come live onto the show with me is fantastic too. And also please share this video and invite your friends to come and watch this as well. There's an invite button right down below. You can see the plus sign and add people. So please be sure and add people to invite them to come and watch this video so that if they think, if there's something that may be important to them or they can ask questions themselves, which is very important. A lot of people want to shoot the messenger. So, you know, you can take your way out of being the middleman here and bring in the people who you may be trying to educate. Um, I talk to a lot of people's families and help educate them as well. So, um, one thing I wanted to talk about and, and address is some of the things that I do. And I have my website, Terpene Healer, of course. But a lot of what I call, what I do, and when I consult with people, it's patient navigation. And so that's really truly what the title is, is patient navigation. What is a patient navigator? Well, patient navigators exist in every other industry, primarily cancer. In the cancer industry, you'll find patient navigators. And a lot of times when a patient is first diagnosed in the very beginning of their uh, procedures, they're assigned a patient navigator, at least in the larger communities and areas, where they help them to navigate the process of what it means to have a cancer diagnosis. And, oh my God, what do I do? Who do I see? What next? You know, and help guide them through uh, the process of all sorts of different things. You can work on things from social work to medications to the whole spectrum loop of it. And they're really helpful in what patient navigators do is they're like the glue that holds all the different treatments together. They have their hands on a little bit of everything. They talk to the oncologist, the regular physician, the dentist, the, they, they talk to them all and then they make sure the patient's getting the best care possible. And so that's really what I have done with that patient navigation on the, can, on the cancer platform is I've went and I've taken that and turn it into for cannabis and, and CBD healthcare and working with terpenes and the essential oils. So that's where the birth of Terpene Healer came around because my medicine consulting, that is part of our business, that is what I do, but terpene healing is really, that's my part of what we do in my partnership with Irvin. With my medicine consulting, yes, we do consult and I do have clients in that arena, but also um, we do business consulting, lobby work, book signings, educational speaking and all of that. So by putting Terpene Healer out there, I focus primarily on when you like and share and stay on the Terpene healer page you're not going to see politics you're not going to see pop politics you're going to see stuff about terpenes essential oils and healing and strictly those things my medicine consulting is where I separated out and that's where you're going to see more about the politics of pot cannabis whatever you want to call it but politics of pot and um, those type of things um, 
action, legislative action, lobbying, advocacy work, those type of things. So that's where the separation comes from. And then um, the other thing I really just want to highlight is every day we have terpenes all around us. I hope after my class last week that people went and visited my medicine consulting and that they went and saw I hope that they went to visit My Medicine Consulting and went to the welcome page, and then they went and saw the uh, video on there about terpenes and in Colorado Springs and the forest and how terpenes help with seeding the forest. So that was just amazing to me when I found that. That was one of the first things I ever started my terpene healer blog because it was very important for me to go and see that um, everybody understands the terpenes around us every day and they affect us every day. If you smell a natural plant scent or a scent, turpentine is a terpene. So that's all important things to know is that these terpenes surround us every day and they affect us. So say you go to another area and you're a completely different country or a different state and you're around a bunch of different flowers that you've never sent, smelled before, like moving from Montana to Florida, for instance, like I did. Um, you get down here and there's all sorts of different terpenes around that affect you differently than the terpenes that you see in Montana. And then in Montana, we have a lot of the panines because of all the forests. So you'll find a lot more of the A panine, B panine, those type of things up there in the forest. And in Florida, not so much. We do have pine trees down here, but not the prevalence of them like we do in Montana. So um, I see more people are coming in. That's fantastic. Yes, I'm looking forward to a great class. Um, I do like to do the fly by the seat of your pants thing. I kind of prefer that, especially in this kind of format, because when you stick to... An agenda, we have to stick to this stern agenda here. Um, I don't like to do that, especially when I'm trying to make this personal for people. So if anybody has a topic they want to cover, pop it in the comments. I've got tech support here with me again today. Um, last Tuesday was Anxiety Tuesday. Anybody who was listening or watched that class last week and you want to chime in, or anybody who's had success with their anxiety or treating it or thought processes, Pop it into the comments and let's talk about it. And let me check with tech support really quick. Hold steady one second. And I want to remind everybody, go look up this compendium. It was on the post last week. I posted the link to it. Stay tuned. I'll be right back. Did you find it on mine down here? I'm looking on yours now. Okay. Hang on a minute. Let me get this. Dun, dun, dun. Bear with me, folks. we got to get stuff shared out. We're having little little tech issues, so we're on it. We're still here. Hey, Terry, entertain him with your humor on chat or <laughs> comments somewhere. <laughs> Hang with us, folks. We got to get this shared out so we can have more company, more friends in for the show. Also, invite your friends. I'll say it again. Please invite your friends. There's a little ad button on there. Invite your friends. Share it to other places. Oh, and I see a comment in there. I love my essential oils for anxiety. Hey, what essential oils do you use for your anxiety? I know a fantastic one that people like a lot. Of course, lavender is very popular, but also um, Melissa. And yeah, I can't hold anything up. The print's backwards because of the way my camera's facing, so I can pay attention and we'll work on that tech stuff probably the next class. Once we get things going steady. But if I turn it around, I can't see your comments either. Bear with us. Okay, here it is right here. See the little red live button? It's still loading. Okay, yeah, I got gotcha you now. Yeah, that's what. Here we go. <clears throat> How did you get that up? Wait, it's not up yet. Look. We're... Oh, I click on that. There. So then when it loads there, <laughs> see right here? Okay, so right here, from here, this is where you can do the sharing we talked about. Right here, Terry, see that? There's your sharing. Yeah, button. right down on the bottom. Okay, I'll do that sharing now if you wouldn't mind. Okay, tech support, we got her going on. 
We have more viewers coming in. We're getting more sharing going on. Um, I had asked, what essential oils do people like to use for their anxiety? So, do I have any more comments in there? Who, who likes what? I mentioned lavender and Melissa for anxiety treatment. Does anybody use either one of those? Or what essential oils do you use for your anxiety right now? And then I want to look them up really quick. Um, just so that you know, too, yes, the print's going to be backwards. But this is the um, doTERRA product information pages. I love this book. You have the exact same thing without purchasing it. You can go to doTERRA.com. Look up the single oils. Every single oil that you look up individually, scroll down to the bottom of the page, there's a little button that says PIP. That's your product information page. All of those, these are simply a printout that I get being a wellness rep, so I bought the book. So, um, yes, and Katie responded, she uses lavender because Melissa is expensive. It's a lemon balm, and that is correct. And so, let, Melissa, it is very expensive, and that's where if you do want to try it, we can get that in a roller ball for you. I usually upcharge an additional $5 for the Melissa drops because they are expensive. But I do put Melissa in my anti-anxiety tinctures. And so that's a great way for you to also try it to see if you like it before you go and make that expenditure. Um, and also, if you'll note in my comments, I did do a disclaimer on some of my oils because when I do make my roller balls and my tinctures, um, I do a lot of formulating, but these really expensive oils like the frankincense, the myrrh, helichrysium, uh, Melissa, as was mentioned earlier, uh, blue tansy, a lot of those, like Melissa alone is almost $2 a drop. So if you put, you know, a little bit goes a long way, but it breaks down to about $1.50, $1.60 a drop. I think I'd have to do the math again. So um, it's beneficial and it's helpful for you if I can put those oils into something and let you try them before you make the expense. And then that way you can truly find out if it's going to be helpful for you or not. And that's important to me because so many people, what I find happens is so many people when they get sick, they're at the bottom, the end of their rope financially too. And so that is where we can help people to find what works. I, I really try to help people find the best um, remedies possible for the least amount of money as well. It's really important that people be able to treat themselves and be able to treat themselves regularly and not have to choose between food on the table and, and uh, whether they can take their medication or not. So that's very, very important that we have that. And, and I want to give that ability to people to be able to do that. And that's why I do my tinctures and my um, roller balls the way that I do. And also encapsulating. And then also there's comments in there about Copaiba. And Copaiba is fantastic. Um, there's a group out here on Facebook, as a matter of fact, called Copaiba Success Stories. And I, um, even though it's very limited, I stock up on Copaiba. I buy it every month. And I have other people who buy it for me, too, because if they don't use as much as I do, then they'll, you know, I buy their bottles from them. But um, I put Copaiba in everything. And another thing that's very interesting that I really wanted to share with people, too, is when, when this first came out last year and Copaiba really hit the market and it was really catching traction and um, people were really starting to pay attention to it, there were stories and um, actually Dr. Hill, who is the, one of the lead doctors at doTERRA, at the conference I saw a video of him speaking about Copaiba can replace CBD and it's legal all across the nation. Well, CBD is legal across the nation too, so we're not going to get into that argument. But here's a, a very highly papered doctor going, it's as good as CBD. And I'm like, wait a minute, that man's not going to jeopardize his career and stand up there and say that unless there's something to it. And so at that point is where I really went into researching the Copaiba. And I went and talked to some of my doctor friends because I'm like, how can you do that? What's the deal? How can you say it's better than CBD? And I, I just, I don't quite understand that. How can, what's going on? Well, the fascinating thing about Copaiba is it's loaded like 65%. As long as you get certified pure therapeutic grade. Certified pure therapeutic grade. We're going to talk about that next. But 
when you get that, it's 65% beta caryophylline. And what's important about beta caryophylline, as you know, beta caryophylline, or if you don't know, it's a terpene. And it's found heavily in the cannabis plant, and black pepper is loaded with beta caryophylline. And uh, so beta caryophylline being a terpene is one of the few terpenes that actually acts upon CB receptors. CB receptors, the receptors all throughout our body that uptake cannabis and promote healing, wellness, those type of things, preventive medicine, homeostasis of the entire neurological system. That's why working and, and, and affecting the endocannabinoid system is so hugely important. And when we can get in there and dance along the endocannabinoid system with our terpenes, we can guide the cannabinoids and tell them exactly what we want them to do. So I went to my doctor friends about the whole thing about copaiba, and I'm like, how can they say that, you know? And he says, well, you know, when it affects um, the, the CB1 receptors, there is a special flavor, the way that he said it was, there's a spe special flavor of scientists who would call that beta caryophylline or copaiba a cannabinoid because it affects a CB1 receptor. Well, copaiba and all that beta caryophylline that's in it actually does. It blocks the CB1 receptor, and it's an agonist for the CB2, which promotes health and wellness, blocks bad things from getting in, lets the good things in, and all those type of things. So research, research, Google is your friend. I can't tell you enough how many people... <laughs> um, you can look stuff up in a flash, and it's... It's all right there on our phone. So, you know, that's why I tell people, it's right there. All the answers are in your hand, and you can pick it up and talk to your phone and go, Hey, Siri, what's beta caryophylline? And Siri can spell it, even if you can't. <laughs> For some reason, it figures it out. But that's because a lot of people are searching the terpenes and stuff out there. So, please do not be afraid to... Um, Research, research, research. And then I also see that um, I, was I was nervous to take it internally until I talked about it last week. And so, and I believe we're referring to Copaiba. And I, I understand that a lot of people really do have fears about taking medications internally and essential oils. As a matter of fact, when I first got into the whole essential oil world, there were people who looked at me and went, you're nuts. If you, what are you doing? You can't take those internally? And I'm like, yes, you can but they have to be certified pure therapeutic grade. So now let's talk about that for a minute because that to me is hugely important, especially with the testing. So certified pure therapeutic grade, that means it's unadulterated pure oil. So I, I should have brought in my other oils. I have a whole rack of oils that I'm getting ready to send off to somebody else just because they want them. And I almost feel like I'm sending poison. But, um, like, I bought a sample of helichrysium. I was in a, um, it was a 10 mil bottle. I spent, like, $20 on it of helichrysium. I'm like, right on, I finally found this. It's supposed to be really good for you. I get it home, and I started learning about oils, especially after I got into doTERRA, and that's the first thing I did is I went and grabbed that bottle, and I looked at it when I was reading and learning, and they were talking about adulterated oils. And I read up on that label, and I looked at it, and, yep, there it was, already adulterated and diluted with another oil. And not just any oil, but olive oil. So they were diluting my helichrysium oil with olive oil, which isn't necessarily something I want to be putting on my skin anyway. I usually prefer a MCT coconut oil. It's better for you. So everybody who is not using a certified pure therapeutic grade that you can't get lab results on, please... Look at your bottles, do some research before you spend money. I spent a way too much money on oils that I shouldn't have. And now I have a beautiful, I have every single oil that doTERRA puts out. I have their single oils, every single one of them. So if there's something somebody needs made, I can help you with that. But it's very, very important to me, that certified pure therapeutic grade. And then also I was counseling with another client earlier today. And... Um, they were talking about their oregano oil that they had bought, and it was $20 from what they remembered that they had paid for it. And um, they, they thought they were happy with that until I went to my little 
handy dandy book here and I'll just do what I did with them right now. I went and I looked up oregano oil under my single oils, which you, you folks, if you have the ability, um, like I have my phone going now and my laptop over here plus my books, but if you have a laptop or something you're watching on your phone or vice versa, go and look up doTERRA, doTERRA.com. And when you get in here, look up oregano, scroll down to the bottom and you'll get to the PIP product information page, just like I'm looking at right here. And our wholesale for 15 mil bottle, which is 250 drops, which goes a long way. I, I still have my first bottle of oregano that I bought September, and I use it. So it lasts a long time. And that bottle of 15 mil bottle is $24 for wholesale. It retails for 32 So my friend there that I was counseling earlier had went and paid $20 for an adulterated oil that they probably moved through pretty quick. And here you can get a concentrated certified pure therapeutic grade that you can always go back. Another trick to know at the bottom of every doTERRA oil, when you look at the bottom of the oils, and I can look up the ones that I have here if you're worried about it, um, there's a control number on the bottom of every one of them. So you can go and look at the lab samples and even more importantly, you can see how old your bottle of oil is. And so one of the things that you go to to do that is source2u.com. Source2u.com website. And when you go in there, it'll ask you for your control number right there on the top. And um, that will take you into the lab testing and you'll see when the sample was created so you'll know how old your oils are. Now, as long as we're talking about oils too, another th little known fact a lot of people really don't know about oils and when they're dealing with their essential oils. Um, when you get these little bottles in the, in the mail, I don't know about you, but I'm always super excited. My doTERRA order, order shows up, I'm like, I can't wait to get into it, I'm ripping the lids off, you know, and going to town. But don't, no matter how excited you get, if it's hot, wait put your oils in the fridge and let them cool off, especially if you live in hot states. Like down here in Florida, I signed up in August, August, September, I'm getting my oils and they're showing up and it's, it, they're, it's hot, really hot. And one thing I went through my uh, certified aromatherapist course and I'm learning through that, um, oxidization is a huge thing that hurts and harms our oils. You'll always see me, if you're around me when I'm working with my oils, I'm always checking my caps. My caps are always tight. My myrrh, I always clean my myrrh off. A lot of people you'll see it gets all crusty and gummy because that's what it does. Well, that's called oxidization. And every one of these oils oxidizes. Every time you open an oil, it oxidizes and you lose a little bit. You know, it turns into a gaseous form. Keep in mind these are chemical compounds. The terpenes are released. So when you open them hot, Heat is not a terpene's friend. It's not an essential oil's friend at all. When you open them hot, it's been proven that this one right here, our wonderful lemongrass, if you open lemongrass hot, you can lose 65% of the efficacy of that oil just with one opening of that oil at a hot temperature. So please put them in the fridge and let them cool off before I know the excitement. It makes me crazy. And I'll sit there and I'll be tapping my foot and I'll go, oh. Shake them around a little bit, get it cooled off. But I will not pop that lid until I know that they're cooled off. Um, I take my cases of oil everywhere with me when, when I go to events and stuff like that. And I will not leave my oil sitting in the car. Um, I don't want them to get heated. And then also for people who work with uh, CBD and THC, um, and I'll, I'll talk about that in this video because we have legal states all across the country and people are making their own medicine in all sorts of different states. And this is not for one state in particular. This is for nationwide, if not worldwide knowledge in my book. So I'm not afraid to share it for a second. But um, please look to non-activated forms of this medicine and these medicines. And I'm talking about when I say non-activated, CBDA and THCA. Those are both hugely important. Um, when you can make a non-activated THCA tincture and people do not get impaired, it's huge. But even more so than that, look up and Google THCA and nausea. 
It's one of the best things you can do for a cancer patient when they're getting nauseous. And anybody who wants to know about that, I have a fantastic process that I know that I can do that I've done before. Um, and I work with fruit, particularly dried blueberries, because blueberries are also shown, and if you research that, blueberries also fight and create apoptosis. So apoptosis, there's a big word. Apoptosis, what is apoptosis? And I like to say it like that because I want people to understand it and be able to remember that word. It's a fun word too, apoptosis, apoptosis. Say that 10 times fast. <laughs> but apoptosis is cancer cell death. So I love that word. And anytime I can make that happen for a client, it makes my day because we're killing their cancer and that's important to me. So there's a lot of essential oils that have been uh, proven to cause apoptosis as well. And one of those is clary sage. So be sure and Google and look up clary sage and apoptosis and you'll find that um, clary sage, it's documented in a couple at least scientific PubMed articles that it causes apoptosis and that results in cell death. Now some of the experiments are a little strange that I had read through because I was like, what? But when you get down and dig down into it, um, that's the hard part that people have with researching is a lot of these PubMed and NCBI literature and stuff like that is not uh, dumbed down enough for the general layperson and you have to sort through it. Well, with my educational training and my background when I studied psychology and um, was working in this field and I'm just a science geek and a nut and it sticks in my head, um, that's where I really got to be able to absorb a lot of those uh, scientific articles better and I don't mind reading them that's part of what I do and, and do a lot of that research and that's also how we figure out a lot of dosing and stuff like that is by going through and looking at uh, what happens in other research studies and it's very important to look at that now another thing I want to talk about too you guys can throw topics at me I'll bring that up again too. fly by the seat of your pants I'm just kind of rambling here so if anybody has a question or they want to cover something specifically, I can, any time. Pardon me? I'm asking if they have questions. Oh, and Terry's asking you if, she has, if we have questions too, so answer her. <laughs> and I'm just going to take a second and scroll back through the comments too really quick. So nobody feels left, left out. Oh yes, that opening the oil thing. A lot of people don't do that. Um, what other oil causes apoptosis? I'd have to do more research, but I know that what I use in my cancer fighter is a lot of frankincense and myrrh, and those have uh, scientific research behind them as well. Frankincense, myrrh, and clary sage are dynamite. And then the terpenes that I utilize for that, I usually add my myrcene terpene which I, w I really wish we had smell-o-vision. This is my little, I keep it, I have big bottles at home, but this is how I carry around my actual cannabis terpenes. And um, Mercy is a fantastic one to get into those cancer fighters too. Mm. I just love that one. Oh. But um, Mercy is just dynamite for uh, working on pain issues as well. Now, here's something that I think I might have forgot to mention when we were in the book. I'm going back to the product information pages in the book here really quick because I want you guys to understand what I'm talking about. And when I try to whittle down a problem, like in my formulations, I make an index card for people and I track what I put in their medications or in their, their tinctures. And then I will go and I look up what terpenes are in there primarily and hunt down by terpene and then cross-reference by terpenes. So anybody who watched last week, you'll, under, you'll re remember that I had my um, terpene book, the actual textbook terpenes, and it's linked back there. Not cheap book, but fantastic book for the science geeks. If you're really into chemistry and science, spend the money. If you're not, do not spend your money on that book. Don't do it. You can learn so much more. You're just going to blow your mind and 
be feeling like you wasted your money if you're not into the science of it at that level. So it's a great looking book, but don't spend the money on it unless you're really into the science. But I am, and that's why I like to cross over and look at what terpenes are in what. So let's just look at one of the formulations. I'm not going to talk about the patient that it was made for, but I am going to talk about the formulation and why I put it together the way that I did. So um, I had a request for an anxiety uh, CBD tincture to put together for um, a veteran who suffered from PTSD. And so one of the biggest things I did with that is they, they're thinking more about, more along the lines of a, a rescue formula, like, hey, I'm really in trouble right now, can I take that and, and get it under my tongue and stop my anxiety? I'm like, well, yeah, you can work on it in a rescue situation, but it's really better to have the meds on board the entire time. It's more important to have it that way because that way you have preventive so we don't get into that situation. But then also what the um, essential oils were that I put in there was Melissa. And I like the Melissa because the lemon balm and it's very calming. It's also very high in myrcene. Copaiba. Let's just go look these up and we'll go through it just like I do when I'm blending. And I use a variety of books. I'm just keeping it simple with the ones that I have right now. So we're going to look up Melissa. And here's an interesting thing here, too, when you look at Melissa. Um, it, it's lemon balm, of course, is what they call it. I'm going to show you the bottle just because it's right here. And it's Melissa officinalis. Very nice oil. Very interesting. Um, I actually... I don't find it very appealing to me when I smell it. I don't even want to open it and smell it right now because of, one, oxidization. It's a very expensive oil, and I don't open it unless I absolutely have to. And two, um, I don't need it. And so I'm not going to do that to myself right now because remember, you smell this, you're bouncing off your limbic system immediately. Right now, that's hitting your limbic system and affecting your brain. So keep that in mind. And... Um, also, when you're working with your oils, or if you're sampling oils, try not to sit down and do with eight different oils at a time. You're going to really overwhelm yourself. By the time you get to the last one, you may not even recognize the profile because you have burned out your nose. That's very important that people understand that. Take a break, walk away. And so, like, when I'm tabling at an event or something, I'm like, you can sniff a couple of these here now, and then I want you to go away and come back. Because if you sniff any more after that, you know, let's just look at the ones that you think may be really appealing to you. Then you can come back and look at the other ones. But you need to evaluate it that way. Because otherwise, they'll just sit and burn it out. And then, also, I really don't like to have a lot of people handling my oils. You know, like, when it's me and another person in a one-on-one, -on -one, Definitely, and then I sit there and I go through the entire box eh, 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 and be sure all my lids are tight before I even move. <laughs> it's, it's just neurotic um, obsession for me, but they're so valuable to me that that is why I do that. I don't ever want to waste them or see them get, get wasted or ruined that way from oxidization. So um, anyway, we were looking up the oils for this anxiety formula. So Melissa, I definitely put in there. And also, when they speak about the primary benefits in our product information page, it calms tension and nerves, promotes feelings of relaxation, may help support a healthy immune system. So all of that is very important. But really, the calming of the nerves, um, I've heard of other wellness advocates out there that actually do a straight shot of Melissa underneath their tongue, one drop a day. And I, I don't know that I could do that, but... They get their benefit and say it works really well. Well, in that little 5 mil bottle, there's 80 drops. And if they can do one a day, that's almost three months worth of treatment for anxiety for $135. When you do the math, it really works out to about 40 45 bucks a month for one bottle. A little bottle of oil that you can take anywhere with you. It's 5 mils. You can take it on an airplane without a problem. So... There's all sorts of solutions, but sample it, see if it works first before you go and make that big investment unless you're going to get involved at the level that I am, 
when it when you get involved at the level I am where I'm working with and helping multiple multitudes of people it's beneficial for me to have all these oils because I can help more people that way and if I can find them better relief that's important to me so moving on to the next oil and the one that I just I love it and I put it in almost everything if not everything is the copaiba and copaiba again the main chemical component is caryophylline so that is just fantastic and then it's also a very powerful antioxidant big words again here helps calm soothe and support the nervous system so that's hugely important as a matter of fact um, I don't know if anybody saw if, if you didn't see this on Facebook I'll try and share it again later but um, I actually healed a cancer that was on my little dog's ankle now I did that with RSO daily patches got rid of it in less than two weeks topical application exter exterior turn tumor but ever since that happened and this happened over Thanksgiving last year I put five drops of copaiba in my dog's one gallon water reservoir every time I go and refill their water because I want them to have that beta caryophylline on board and from all the benefits that I hear yeah please do and um, I have a note here Katie wants to know if the book is on your on my page are you saying is it on my page or on your page I don't know on my Facebook page? On, on her Facebook page. If you shared the video from last week that I did, the two-hour class from last week, it's in the contents, the description of that video. And I believe the book that you're talking about is this doTERRA Essential Oil Chemistry Handbook. And so that one is in, the link to that is in the description of last week's class. And I'll throw it in this one again when I go home do my review and go and add all the comments if you go back and look from last week folks everything that I referenced except for the one thing that I missed was the um, capsuline holding trays and stuff like that remember I did a bunch of stuff about demystifying and what to do then um, the only thing I didn't get listed up there was the capsuline products and I'll try and get those up for the holding trays and the capsules and those type of things but all of the books that I had shown last week I linked there to where you can find them on Amazon for a real reasonable price and then um, products the pipettes I don't know if I put the magnetic spinner up or not I'll have to look but if you're really going to get into doing a lot of mixing and blending I really can't say enough my little magnetic spinner tool that I have lifesaver I mean, when I'm making my little tinctures and my 30 mil bottles, it's all, I have my little 30 mil or 50 mil beaker and I have my mag magnetic spinners and I make it and it fits right in that bottle. And so it's really important to me that I don't have a lot of waste. And then the blending that happens with that is just incredible. So, but yeah, all of that stuff and I'll do that again with this one and I'll link a bunch of the stuff because I'll go through and see what I referenced and make sure that I get links to that. So I'm glad we mentioned Capsuline again because I'll be sure and get those holding trays and that website in here for those references as well. Now, um, to finish up what I was talking about with the anti-anxiety tincture that I did for this one client, um, I also added wild orange and lavender. So everybody knows about lavender, anybody who's been in oils for some time. If you don't, we're going to talk about it and look that up too, but right now I want to go to Wild Orange because I was like, Wild Orange, that's interesting to me. Why would Wild Orange be anti-anxiety? You'd figure that that is going to excite somebody because it's, you know, the citruses are energizing. But it's uplifting to the mind and the body. So when you can uplift and create happiness, that helps to bring down anxiety. So that just made total sense to me was to throw that wild orange in there. And then with lavender, oh, wild orange, let me go back and look at the, it's limonene as well. And limonene is very, very calming. So we wanna look at that terpene, wild orange, main component, limonene. So when you go back to lavender, it's linalool, as well as linalool acetate. And so that linalool is also a very calming terpene that really brings people down. So when you add the lavender and the wild orange with the copaiba and the melissa, 
if that doesn't settle somebody down, I don't, I don't know what's going to. Anybody else have any suggestions of what they would have put in there? I'd be very interested to know any of the other oilers out there what you would have added to that in addition to or what you would take out and add instead if you did that. But I think I would maybe, I, I, I don't think I'd add anything to that one for what I had described as far as like being a little rescue formula. Although I did encourage the client to be sure and um, take it more than once or take it daily for relief. <laughs> maybe a shot of rum. <laughs> I don't know. Would it make it taste better? <laughs> Actually, they don't taste bad. But um, the Melissa, to me, I just, I, 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 I don't know that I could take Melissa every day. Um, now, another anxiety one that I did... Yeah, this one was anxiety and a couple different things. I just want to go over the contents because it had a couple different things in it for a couple different issues, which I'm not going to go into that because I don't want to explain the client, expose any personal information about a client. But um, in this other anxiety slash wellness tincture, I will call it, of course I had Melissa in there and a lot of it for calming time. Um, thyme has thymol and terpenone for all, which those are great terpenes as well. And geranium, which is your, um, all of these are, uh, geranium is really good for the belly too. And um, basil, which is linalool, eugenol, and methylcavicol. Lemongrass, copaiba, and juniper berry. Now juniper berry, I really like to put in some stuff for people because it has that apenine in it, which is very, helps to focus people. So, oh, great feedback. Yeah, Katie, that might've been a good idea. Now, I will tell you, I did two tinctures for this person and the way I, I what kind of chose my decision not to put peppermint in there is because I also did a belly formula. And in the belly formula, I had peppermint in that. And so I figured that they were getting enough peppermint. And I don't like to overwhelm people with peppermint because it can be very powerful. And like myself, I love spearmint. I like a candy cane, but I love spearmint. I'm not such a big peppermint fan. And wintergreen, I really like it, but I, you know, it's another one of those. I could do spearmint all day long. Those other two, I'm very reserved about. So I, I just try to not overwhelm people because also when I'm blending, I'm going into a 30 mil bottle. And even though we're diluting, some of that can still get hot for people. And so I always, always, always go and research, you know, can this be taken internally? And I do that research before I go and put anything in there because there are some things that you just absolutely do not want to take internally. Um, and then if you do, they need to be diluted. Like one that, sh that can be taken internally but really should be diluted is cinnamon because it's hot. That's really hot, hot oil. So, oh, yeah, and I just got a comment on here too that peppermint overstimulates if taken internally. And that can very well happen with people too. Yeah, that's a great point to bring out. So, let's see. Oh, the Lang Lang, yeah, wild orange and Lang Lang to stop heart palpitations. Now, I'm going to go look up Lang Lang just because that was brought up here, and I really like that oil, and Lang Lang is fantastic for exactly what you're talking about, about calming and doing the, um, bringing down the heart palpitations. Lang Lang is also a very happy oil. I like to use a lot of that for people to incite happiness, especially if they're going through a lot of depression. So... Lang Lang provides antioxidant support when ingested. Um, it helps with skin hair when applied topically, and it lifts mood while having a calming effect when diffused. So that that is a big deal there, and Lang Lang is fantastic. And when you think about diffusing, keep in mind you're going, that atomizer is turning those oils in that water into find fine particles of mist that get straight into not just you, but everybody around you in your room. So when you're diffusing your Lang Lang, 
you're not just getting yourself, you're getting your spouse and your kids or anybody else in the room with you or who may come in there or your animals or that kind of stuff. Now again, I cannot stress enough and I'm probably gonna say it every video because it's so important to me. If you have animals in the house, please research your oils. Eucalyptus is deadly to cats, you know? You can use eucalyptus yourself in your shower in your bedroom, keep the cat out. Do not have your cat locked in the room and fog yourself with eucalyptus. You're gonna hurt your kitty cat and there's ones that get really, really sick and some of them die. So really, really be careful with that. Um, Copaiba, I did a lot of research before I ever gave that to my dogs. Um, there's some great sites out there and I'll try and do some research and get it linked in the comments later about what essential oils are good for animals and I'm going to be sure and post that in this video below and I'm talking about it now so when I go back and review it's going to pop up below because I'll review this whole thing and I link up everything that I mentioned. So please, please, please again I just cannot stress enough. Double check especially with our furry little friends and if you have smaller animals like I have my gerbils they're not even a hundred grams so if I go fogging something in the room on them, I could drop a gerbil. I mean, I have my own little mouse experiment going on there if I chose to do that, which I don't want to do that because I love my little friends. But um, <laughs> you got to be careful with that. So, oh, is tea tree oil safe for dogs in a diffuser? I am going to look that up and I'll have to post it. But um, tea tree, I believe, is the melaleuca. Yeah. Melaleuca oil is tea tree oil. So um, I haven't heard much about that. It could be a thing where it's not to not good topically for them. But um, I'll definitely look that up and get it in there. And we'll find out about tea tree oil, tea tree oil for animals because they unfortunately don't tell me in here. And I can't look it up on my phone because I'm on my phone talking to you right now. And then I got tech support on my computer over here. How's tech support doing, Terry? Getting it together. <laughs> now they realized what I was doing wrong. <laughs> you get the I'm shares out there? I'm doing it now. <laughs> She's sharing the video for me, so... <laughs> Yes, um, there's a comment in here about uh, Katie heard a story of someone poisoning their dog with it. Well, probably with a diffuser, not in a diffuser. Uh, that'd be a really, really tiny dog to get in a diffuser. Walk out, walk out. But, um, <laughs> or a big reservoir. <laughs> really anyway, bad. but yeah, you can definitely kill an animal. Now, I had not heard about a dog, but I did see the piece about the cat. And unfortunately, that kitty cat did not make it. It went to the vet and was on life support and everything. But whoever it was was just really, really sick. And they were doing high, high amounts of oils in their diffusers. And the cat loved to sleep in their room. And so they shut the door to keep all the stuff in there. And the cat got really sick, went to the vet, and died. So you got to be careful about that. And then um, also, when you are diffusing, one thing I want you to keep in mind... Um, you do not have to do 50 drops of oil in a diffuser. When you're feeling like, I, I prefer my 300 mil, it holds 300 mils of water. That's the one I really prefer because I get a nice long run out of it. And even this little bottle of wild orange here, um, I go and check that. And, uh... With the wild orange, I'd go and, what did I put in there? Maybe five drops? Five drops is sufficient in 300 mils? And you can get a great diffusion with that. Because keep in mind, these are very, very concentrated. And so, you know, there's people who are like dumping whole bottles in their diffuser, and that's like overdosing. Microdosing is the key with everything. And I really want to say microdosing is really the key, not only with essential oils, but CBD and THC as well. Um, are we ready to move on and talk? Yeah, I see some thumbs up on that. Yeah, let's talk about microdosing because I think people are liking that. The only instances I will tell you right now where I ramp a client up to high doses of THC and CBD immediately is in cancer situations. And um, it depends on the seizure condition 
But usually epilepsy seizure condition, you wind up ramping up pretty quick because their body uses it up pretty fast. And sometimes in pain management. But a lot of times you start at a very low dose and then ramp up. Because what happens is people develop a tolerance. And, or like in, in the case with pain management, sometimes people's pain levels are so high, their body uses it. And they use up that all of the meds immediately. And that's one thing that's happening with the opioid crisis that a lot of the doctors, um, the, the ones that really are, are working heavily and working very diligently with the pain management and working to help people, they really do metabolic testing on their patients to see what their metabolic rate is and how fast they metabolize their pain meds, especially if they're prescribing pain meds for any patients for any long periods of time. Well, metabolic rates are hugely important to know because Somebody who is in their teen years or even into their millennial up till 30 is going to metabolize things faster than somebody like me who's older than that. <laughs> um, let's just say I'll be, I turned 51 in November. I'm not afraid of it. But when we get older in our age, our metabolism slows down incredibly sometimes. And so I may metabolize a medication completely differently than anybody else sitting out there in the chair or even tech support over here. So um, those are things that need to be taken into consideration. And the only way we can really judge and gauge that in this industry and what we're doing here with the integrative medicine, essential oils, CBD and THC, especially since we don't have testing, it's all trial and error. And that's one of the most painful things to go through right now is trial and error, especially when people are very sick. But until we get more legalities going on and until patients anywhere and everywhere have access to lab testing, not just dispensaries, patients need access to lab testing, then we're really not going to have a lot of the uh, answers that we need in today's world. Oh, good. And I have another comment in here. I have metabolism issues on certain drugs. Was tested. Good info to know. Yeah, a lot of people don't know about the met metabolic testing for um, specific drugs. And that's important to know because a lot of these drugs, um, if you metabolize it slowly, especially like ones that, one that's very frightening to me is methadone. Uh, methadone, you've really got to know how people metabolize to even, I feel, prescribe that drug for somebody. Um, I helped a fella get off of methadone back in 2011, 2012. I was in Colorado and my, my pal Char and I, pardon me, it just got really hot in this room. Um, my pal Char and I were running like a rescue house for a lot of patients and we were importing patients to Colorado from across the nation. And this fella th really threw a Hail Mary. He was hooked on methadone, knew he was hooked on it. He was actually at a very low dose, but he knew he couldn't get off of it by himself. And so he came to these two crazy women in Colorado, all the way from Louisiana and drove up there and stayed with us in that house. And we got him off of methadone and it was incredible. We used the RSO for that. And um, we had some doctors there that helped with the oversight. And we had him off the methadone within two weeks. And then he carried on with his cannab ca cannabis therapy. And today he's a little married man now. Went and went back to his girlfriend in Louisiana and they got their life back together. And he was back to, you know, being a productive member of society and not, not all crippled up and gimped up and stuck to bed. And, um... He's doing fantastic today. And he's not even taking RSO anymore. It was just a matter of getting him off the methadone into some good treatment and wellness and back to health. So some of those success stories just make my day and I get really tickled about that. Oh, hey, Michelle, I haven't forgotten about you, sweetheart. I'm going to get over and go see you. I've got to. Terry, we have to go see Michelle. I know, I just was typing, did I ask a question? <laughs> No, oh, I just, I've been so dang you, busy. We yes, we love, we love Michelle. Michelle. And I'm not going to expose anything about Michelle, but she can't come see me, so I have to go see her. She's kind of stuck. So, miss your face. Me too, okay. to tell you I said hi. <laughs> <clears throat> 
So, next thing. Oh, another thing I wanted to talk about. I told Terry, remind me to talk about this. What time is it? It is 7.24. We've been on almost an hour. Ooh, we've been almost an hour, and I haven't done this yet. Okay. I don't know if anybody saw my video about inhalers. Um, <laughs> I was scrolling through Facebook one day, you know, ding, ding, ding on the phone. I'm like, what? Stop. Pardon me. They were selling vapor cartridges for essential oils. Oh, Chris wants to come on? No, you said to share it, and I, I found my Annie Cannabis. I oh. My cannabis network. Oh, well, you'll have to share it from here because you don't that's, have it. That's what I've been trying to do. As I've been sure. yeah. Don't worry about it. We'll get it next time. But anyway, back to where I was is the, um, here's your notes. <laughs> I gotta talk to tech support every now and then. <laughs> oh yes, everybody send love to Michelle, please. Thank you, Becca. Anyway, um, the vape cartridges, I couldn't believe it. They were selling little vape pens for essential oils. They had lavender and wild orange and all of that, and I'm like, what? And so I click it and I look at it and yeah, the further I go to look at it and they're mixing them with propylene glycol and all of that. And I'm like, oh no. Um, one thing I really, before I move into the inhaler that you have with you every day, um, please, if you are using any kind of a vape product, check the information. Propylene glycol is what a lot of people use to thin down resins to go and make vape pens and vape cartridges. That's what a lot of people put into CBD cartridges as well as THC cartridges. So it's very important to understand what happens with propylene glycol when it goes and it's vaporized and heated and goes into your lungs. Propylene glycol, if you look it up, what happens when you incinerate or heat propylene glycol? Google that exactly that way. What happens with propylene glycol when it is vaporized or heated? Phrase it along those lines, you'll find this answer. You'll find that propylene glycol has a propensity to cause something called popcorn lung. And what that means is that that product gets inside your lung and when it cools off in there, it turns to plastic. So people think it's better to go off and be vaping, but if that vape juice is loaded, and I'm talking cigarette vapes too with the nicotine, if it's loaded with propylene glycol, which when you see people making the big fogs, I mean, I've seen people vaping in their cars and you see the huge fog come out the car, I'm like, wow, they'd make Cheech and Chong jealous. <laughs> That's propylene glycol. That's the propylene glycol. And it's, the higher the concentration of propylene glycol, the bigger the fog. So I don't know why they think the big fog is so cool. I kind of really prefer to be very discreet myself. But um, you have an inhaler, and I, I did this in another video. I just have to smell it because I love it. And I love to do this with breathe, especially since I do have respiration issues every now and then. But your inhaler is right here. And I'm going to show you how to do it again. So you can take your essential oil, and if you have something in a roller ball, you can simply roll that on your hand. And I just do one drop, one drop, one drop. One drop of breathe right there in your palms. Rub it together like this. Okay? Get it all in there. Make a fist. Clamp it around there like that. So the bottom of your hand, still open, on the bottom of this fist, both of the palms of your hand now have breathe on them. And that's your inhaler right there. You don't need to add propylene glycol. You don't need a vaporizer. You get health benefit and you can control how far you drive it in by your pressure. So just doing those kind of things, it adds more air, drives it deeper. Breathe out through your nose to get more added benefit and into the sinus cavity. And every time I do that with breathe and I breathe out through my nose, it's amazing because it cools off my sinuses. It's amazing. So, um, 
that's breathe, but you can do that. I just prefer to do it with breathe because it's so profound to me. You can do that with any of your essential oils. Anything that you diffuse into the air, concentrated diffusion right there. So, you know, if you're worried about your animals, but you want to get that intake and really hit your limbic system fast and hard right now, that's another way. You can do that because then as you're exhaling and as you're inhaling, you're really getting right in there and into your bloodstream right away right now. So, and you can do that with any of your oils. Now, I would not recommend it with black pepper because that one's... And with cinnamon um, or any of the really hot oils, um, cinnamon and wintergreen either one of those if you want to do that with them i would put them into a five mil roller ball and dilute them first and then roll that roller on my hand because both of these look they put a childproof cap on wintergreen when i got that i was like what's with the thing well wintergreen is such a hot oil you can really burn your hide with that it's childproof because they don't want a little kid in there or pouring it all over or whatever you don't get it in your eye you know, and so it was very smart of them to put that childproof cap on there. Now, it doesn't help me much, but. <laughs> now, um, oh, I also mentioned prizes. How could I neglect anything like that? Oh, my gosh. You guys have to speak up. Everybody who has been participating tonight, and I'm talking the ones who logged on. There's been some that have been here from the beginning and doing the whole hour. Every one of you. I want you to message me your address. I'm going to send you all a wild orange, five mil bottle of wild orange. Okay. So that's my gift for everybody who hung out at least for an hour. And anybody who hangs on, it's 730 now. So anybody who stays for the second hour and comes on at 730 and stays for the hour, I will send you a wild orange too. And then for my top sharer tonight, because I can see off of this post, off of Terpene Healer, is where you need to share it from. Don't share it off of my wall. Share it from Terpene Healer. My top healer, I'm going to cut it off Sunday night. By Sunday night, the person who has shared this video the most, I will make you, you get your own tincture. I'm going to do a consult, give you the tincture, and we'll do the 250 milligram with a CBD, and off you go. So for the people who may not be able to afford a tincture or something like that, here's a great opportunity to just go share this video out there. And my top sharer is going to get the CBD 250 milligram tincture mailed to your house just for you. Anywhere in the country. In the country. <laughs> you have to be in the United States. I do have some, some people that are um, maybe watching from out of country. And we really, before I can help any of those people, we really got to research, check what the laws are. And <sighs> that's one of the most painful things is over the years, I've had a lot of people reach out to me from different countries as well. And um, some of that's really painful, but then it's really painful too when you see countries like Uruguay completely legalize. And now they're doing so much more that we can't even do here. So that's one of the, painfully humbling things too of other countries so uh, i'm not opposed to helping other people um there's a, ga a guy that i talked to in africa oh my gosh um i counseled with him in facebook messenger for at least two years and he was down there he's telling me about how he's making meds and he figured out how to do a water extraction and he's healing people and it, it was just amazing so um and no, he never asked me for money, so <laughs> it was really just uh, getting information. But you have to be careful, too. And really, um, I just want to do a little Facebook awareness here, too, because I just saw a really sweet friend of mine who is not really Facebook savvy get um, hacked. They took her phone number and put a different name on it. And they're using Facebook Messenger. And they, there's, I don't know why these people do it, but please, when you people go and add people on Facebook, when you get a friend request, I don't just add people. I go and I look at their wall and I see if they're a real person. And if they just like built their page in the past week or some guy named Mike changed her profile picture, 
some of that stuff just isn't right. And I'll even sit there in the queue or I delete it. Okay? But some of the, you got to be careful because there's people out here, snake oil salesmen. I can't tell you how many people out there. I'll add them and the next thing you know, they're trying to sell me weed through Facebook Messenger. Don't do it. Don't, don't, don't even play that game. I just can't, I'm not even going to give you any reason. Just don't do it. It's illegal. You'll get in a world of trouble. And half the time, what I've heard from a lot of people, I actually had somebody call me up. Did you do it? I'm like, why are you buying cannabis on Facebook Messenger? Because they got ripped off. They never, the guy took their money and they never got anything. I'm like, so I don't know what to tell you in that situation, but don't. Don't. Just don't. You know, if somebody's trying to sell you cannabis through Facebook Messenger, no. You know, and if, if you're getting friend requests from people and you have no idea who they are, you know, there's a lot of the safety and security and privacy stuff out there. So investigate a little further. Just don't be so trusting with that, especially when, you know, Facebook is supposed to be our little corner of the world and our little... Um, place where we we try to corral and keep people that we like and love and and share our lives with so you know we got to try to protect that for all of our friends too because then they get onto your wall and then they go hunting through your friends and they think you're friends with them and blah 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 so but assume nothing ever so <laughs> great personal mantra thank you rebecca our world is changing try to keep up <laughs> Or like Katie said, yeah, they'll help you for a bit and then they'll rip you off. And that happens a lot. Okay, and Terry did send a message out to everybody who needs to um, go and message me for their wild orange. And then did we have anything else somebody wanted to talk about? Oh, here's something I'd really like people to start talking about more in their conversations with people. Because it doesn't happen enough. And there's a lot of people going to dispensaries, especially here in Florida. We have a huge population of the elderly starting to storm those doors. And these folks have no idea why cannabis won't kill you. Does anybody out there know why cannabis won't kill you in the live audience? Show of hands. Somebody tell me. Somebody's got to know. And if you don't, I'm going to repeat it anyway. But. One of the first things I ever tell patients, especially when I'm counseling them, whether it's CBD or THC or whatever, there's been so much brainwashing, so much fear promoted out there, we need to decrease the fear. And one of the things that people need to understand is why cannabis has never killed anybody in the history of mankind. Now, why that is, is because in our brains, we have our brain stem at the back of our brain at the base of our skull and that part of our brain back there is called the medulla oblongata. Now, your medulla oblongata is what controls your heartbeat and your respiration. Now, because it controls your heartbeat and respiration, it's a very important part of your brain. You don't want to hurt that. But the other thing that's very interesting about the medulla oblongata is it doesn't have any CB1 or CB2 receptors on it. And it may have... I think Dr. Russo said it may have very limited CB1 receptors. I don't know. But in all the research I've seen, I couldn't find anything that said it had CB1 or CB2 receptors on it. So therefore, when it has no CB1 or CB2 receptors on it, it can't possibly uptake cannabis to stop your heartbeat or make you quit breathing. If it can't take it up, it can't stop anything. So that's also why when you have a brain tumor in the medulla oblongata, in the brain stem, it's so hard to fight. And that's where we have other tricks that we have to do. Um, and some of those tricks I, I'm going to go into when I do a cancer class. I do want to do a cancer class and talk about a lot of those things, HR2 positive cancers and those type of things. But I really think that will take up a full hour. And I really want to have more cancer patients involved at the time when I do that as well. Because I want their feedback, especially when talking about nausea, chemotherapy, and radiation. Now, um, one other thing I think is important for me to address is... Hang on, Terry's laughing at something. I can't see it. What are you guys talking about down there? Uh -huh. From Katie. 
Bitch, that's a secret. Right. <laughs> oh, speaking of ECS and the endocannabinoid system, that's a great thing that Katie brought up. Um, anybody who doesn't know about the endocannabinoid system, please look it up. Endocannabinoid. Say it out loud. It's a fun word. Endocannabinoid. Everybody say it together. Endocannabinoid. We could make that a rap song. But <laughs> the endocannabinoid system really is what regulates our entire body. And it oversees all of our neurological processes. And it also helps to find and create homeostasis within our body. Now, there's another very little known about system that I did put links into on my last week as well. And I'm going to bring that one up. Because the brain-belly connection is hugely important. And it runs right along nervous system, endocannabinoid system, and the enteric nervous system. What is the entero ner enteric nervous system? Anybody out there? Anybody know? Come on. I see some I see some likes. Anybody can answer what's the enteric nervous system? Well, the enteric nervous system is the one that runs all along your intestinal tract from your esophagus all the way to the rectum at the end. So your enteric nervous system thousands of nerves all through esophagus into the belly, small intestine, large intestine, all along that entire thing. The enteric nervous system is also what talks to the brain. And when I talk about a brain-belly connection, that's what we're talking about. That enteric nervous system, we got to keep brains and bellies happy. When your brain is freaked out, your belly ain't going to be happy. And that comes down to all sorts of different issues, whether it's stress or Autistic people have huge problems with constipation all the time. That's the wiring up here. The pieces aren't connecting. It's very stressful to be autistic because you can't communicate your needs. A lot of people with high, high stress, for lack of a better word, I'm just going to say it, they crap their brains out because there's they're just constantly stressed up going that enteric nervous system that you freaked out and so the whole digestive process is set out of whack and so read up more and I'm still learning a lot more about the enteric nervous system myself but because of me learning about that enteric system is also where I use a lot of enteric capsules now what is an enteric capsule we're going to do that again, too, because I just think it's really important to reiterate this. The whole way I even discovered them is because I have a client who's autistic, and I've had her for over a year now, and a little fart. Um, she just turned 17, so she was 16 at the time, and she'd wake up at 3 o'clock in the morning and just spin and spin, and the whole house would get woke up because she was up at 3 o'clock in the morning spinning. And then she didn't have a good day because she didn't get any rest. So... I had to get sneaky with how we dosed her. And I was like, how can I do a time release? Well, I called up some of my other healers and they said, well, you know, that time release thing, they got to go and do this and do that and special formulations and they make all the little capsules and blah, blah, I'm like, I don't have money for that. I got to figure something out here. Well, enteric capsule was the solution and the answer. What happens now is when she goes to bed at 10 o'clock, she gets a gel cap, and then also she gets an enteric capsule. And what that does, because her mom's like, well, should I wake her up and give her a pill? I'm like, oh, God, no. I hate it when they do that to me in the hospital. We're not doing that to your kid. So I put the other half of her nighttime dose into an enteric capsule. That's how I bought my time release. How did that do the time release? Because it takes that enteric capsule at least an additional hour to get through the belly. Those enteric capsules do not digest in the stomach. They have to go all the way through the stomach to the small intestine. And then they have to get at least two to three inches into the small intestine and away from all that stomach acid, get all that washed off. Because it's the pH of the small intestine that digests the capsule. So that bought me an hour and a half, two hour time. So, mom didn't have to wake her up at midnight. The other capsule hit, and she's now sleeping until 6, which totally acceptable. Everybody gets up at 6 o'clock in the morning. Or at least it's more acceptable for this child because she's a morning person. So, 
And see, I have a comment on here too about when I have an autonomic nervous system flare up, my digestive tract goes crazy, all those nerves. Well, that's exactly why. It's because even though your autonomic nervous system is freaking out, it's still tied to that enteric nervous system. And so that enteric nervous system, that's what it is going off. You know, your autonomic is freaking out. Well, it's affecting the enteric, and that's why the enteric is just going, Wah! And also that enteric nervous system is the one that, you know, when you're on that big roller coaster up at the top, and they drop you really quick to the bottom, and you're... <laughs> that's your enteric nervous system, too. <laughs> so. Anyway. Um... Um, Tasha, what was the false news or the false info? Or maybe it was something we were talking about past. Oh, Kate, Katie's from Canada. Thanks for watching. What, oh, what oils help with GERD? Oh, remind me, what is GERD again? That's a, that's a reflux thing, right? I usually have to, I haven't had to deal with GERD for a while. Oh, gotcha, Tasha. Um, let me see if I can look it up. Are you using this? No. Okay. Let me get on here really quick. Hang with me. It's research time. Still here. Oh, the reflux. Yeah, I knew it was a gut thing. Let's see. Well, the first thing I think I would do with that, let me look at what I did here and some of this other stuff. Where'd my book go? Right here. So with GERD being a gastrointestinal, Hang on, my skirt is got caught in my chair. I got it. <clears throat> one thing I think I would try for GERD for one is the doTERRA Digest Zen. Just because we have the blend. So let me look that one up really quick. So let's see. So if you were on naproxen and they were doing anti-inflammatory, I would definitely re replace naproxen with frankincense oil. But let me look up here. actually try the digest zen and why I say that is because it's a blend of a bunch of different oils and so it's got aniseed peppermint plant ginger root caraway seed coriander seed tarragon plant and fennel seed now fennel is fantastic and then I'm very glad to see that Tasha is also talking about um, probiotics because that's one of the biggest things that I always talk to people about, too. Oh, definitely. And you could be microdosing that, too. Katie, we can message privately about some of that stuff later, too. But definitely with the um, with what you're going through, I'd like to you know talk more with you about it and figure out what's going on. But I would definitely, if you are in doTERRA right now at all, look into the Digest Zen and start adding that. Um, you can add it to your water and take it internally, and it actually tastes pretty good. But um, the aniseed and the fennel, anise, fennel is fantastic. I'm gonna go look at fennel right now, because I actually used that on another client's um, IBS uh, oil that I put together for them, for their tincture. 
And so fennel is loaded with limonene and apenine, and then E and anethol. Those are the main uh, chemical components. Now, a lot of people really don't like um, fennel because of black licorice, and some people just don't like black licorice at all. Me personally, I love it. I, I grab that over the red any time. But um, so there's fennel and anise in there, which are both along the lines of the black licorice. Um, ginger is in there, so we're going to go look up ginger really quick. Maybe if I, can, if I can spell it, we'll look it up. And ginger has the... <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, here's a mouthful. The main chemical components for ginger are zingiberine, zingiberine, and sesquifelindrine. And I bet you that's a sesquiterpene, but that's also a beta sesquifelindrine. So it's alpha zingiberine and beta sesquifelindrine. And so another thing to do also when you're doing your research is to go and look up these terpenes and, and look up exactly, you know, look up zingiberine, benefits of zingiberine. And there's some kind of research out there that's going to tell you because I've noticed also in the PubMed stuff, they're doing a ton of research with the essential oils, which I'm really happy to see that. And hopefully it'll help keep people away from trying to patent a plant. That's the biggest problem that we have is people wanting to patent not only cannabis but any of these with the essential oils and the terpenes or any of that stuff so um we talked about why cannabis will never kill a person so i think we got through that yes i love fennel too um one other thing what else did i want to cover today what time have we got now it is 8, 7.51. Holy beans, we have it's, just a little over half an hour. I mean, it has. It has flown by. Anybody else have any questions they want to talk about, or should I talk about another formulation that I did? I'm still waiting to hear for results, but I could go over another IBS formulation I did for a gal. Um, this little gal, I'm just going to cover hers right now because she was really, oh, bad shape um poor thing hasn't had a solid bowel movement in i don't know how long total ibs well not even really diagnosed they're struggling with a diagnosis on that but lots and lots of stress involved and so i actually encapsulated all of her stuff into enteric capsules because i totally just want to get past all that acid bad belly she's got going and then I went and got her started on kombucha. So she's drinking the kombucha and got that going. And kombucha is really good. It's a fermented live probiotic. And I personally love it myself. And it's really good for helping to get that belly in line. And the good probiotics and reestablishing a good um, environment in the tummy. And so then for this oil that I did for her, I actually, we did a bunch of CBD for her. And then I wanted the frankincense in there for anti-inflammatory because her poor, everything's all just red and swollen, hemorrhoids all the way through. Um, frankincense, fennel, copaiba, always copaiba, cardamom, and peppermint. Now, I went with that one because with this one oil that I put together for her, we're taking it internally. She's using it topically for any hemorrhoids that may poke out. And then um, I also wanted her to be able to um, use it sublingually if needed. So, you know, I just kept stressing her, keep the dropper clean. Because, you know, she can drip it on her finger to treat the sore spots that need treated. But um, a lot of times people, it's really hard to, I ask the questions, especially when I talk to my IBS patients, because a lot of patients are afraid to talk about it. It's embarrassing. They don't want to talk about how, when's the last time you had a solid bowel movement? That's a big deal for a lot of these IBS people because they haven't had one. And it really affects their lives from everything about being active and going and doing things to even having a sex life. 
because they're worried constantly about explosions or everything's sore or red or they have to explain everything or whatever. So, and then it's just very um, inhibiting in, a, in an active lifestyle to have diarrhea constantly. And a lot of times what I find is a lot of these people are very, very high stress. Every person that I've ever treated or worked with on this condition, with this extreme part of it, and I'm talking about the extreme part of it, like haven't had a solid bowel movement in months, what's that? Extreme pain, the hemorrhoids, and all of that. There's been more than one that I've dealt with too, I'm telling you. But every single one of them has high stress going on. And so I also try to take, always try to take a multifaceted approach. We want to work on the stress, work on decreasing the stress, comfort them with that, but also tone down that belly. And that's where that brain-belly connection comes in yet again. That's why we have to nurture the belly. If the belly ain't happy, the brain ain't happy. And if the brain ain't happy, the belly ain't happy. It's just a cycle. And if you sit back and honestly look at your own personal experiences and what you're going through, I bet you can prove myself right every time. Um, I just see it with a lot of people. And, and there's been so many people, once we even just start fixing some belly problems, everything else seems to straighten out and come into alignment. But another thing that happens is the over-medication of, of today in society. Um, one thing I'm seeing is, and, and I've helped a lot of people with, it just makes me crazy, um, when I first see people coming on board, I ask them, I want a list. I want to know every pill you're taking. I want to know what pills you're taking, what supplements you're taking, what's over the counter. Are you doing anything liquid? You know? Because people, you know, you can tell them, I want to know all the prescriptions you're on. Well, they don't think to tell you, oh, hey, I'm taking ginger or um, garlic oil, a ton of garlic oil. Well, garlic thins your blood, and then you're on warfarin? We got to know these things, because... Uh, but big learned that lesson big time from my dad because he was a, a stroke patient and um, he was taking a ton of garlic and then he was on warfarin. Then he'd go into the doctor and they'd test his, they have to test your thinness of your blood to adjust the meds for that because it's very dependent. So they'd drop his warfarin, not realizing he'd eat, eaten a bunch of garlic and he hadn't written it down. Well, plant medicines have a huge effect. So... Please be sure and note that when you go in and talk to your doctor, any of the stuff that you are taking that is over the counter or considered to be herbal. Now, speaking of doctors, here's one thing I, I just want to really express where I'm coming from because there's a lot of people when they see healer, and I use the word terpene healer, that think it's strictly totally holistic medicine. Now, I respect people who totally go holistic. That's their option. And I don't have a problem with that. Everybody has their own personal choice. Myself, though, I prefer to practice integrative therapy and integrative medicine. What does that mean? What is integrative medicine, integrative therapy? That is the combination of holistic and traditional medicine. And that is where our physicians have got to really start looking to that. And I really hope to see a lot more physicians coming to that part of the world with integrative therapy. When I see, like last week, we had somebody pipe up and said, my one doctor said to do this and that oil and this oil. I was like, hold on to that doctor. That's a great doctor. They're doing their homework. They really want to help their patients. And they understand big pharma isn't always the way to go. Matter of fact, myself, I take absolutely no big pharma medications at all, and I'll do anything I can to avoid that um, just because I don't want to be putting those chemicals into my body. But, for instance, last year um, I had an incident where I knew I hadn't had a tetanus shot in over 10 years, and I stepped on a rusty wire, and it went straight through my toe. I immediately hauled my butt to the hospital and went and got a tetanus shot. And that's because I know what tetanus can do to somebody, and it's proven that you want to have a tetanus shot on board. And so now I know when I had my last one. That, to me, is integrative medicine. Now, my holistic people were like, oh, you could have treated it, just soak it in oregano and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, I ain't doing lockjaw. No, I, I, I could really drive my family crazy if I get lockjaw. And then if I died from that, that wouldn't be good. 
you know. So <laughs> I there are some things where I just absolutely will run to my doctor for and that is one of them and that's where we all have to make our evaluations. Now, another situation that I dealt with was with my now youngest daughter who is t turning 18 in July. When she was 11, we were here to visit uh, down here in South Florida and at her sister's house up in Rockledge area. And she is a fish. She was swimming, 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 lived in the pool. Well, what happens when you do that? Especially when you change elevation, there's all sorts of different factors. But swimmer's ear is a very, very common thing that happens with kids. And so three o'clock in the morning, here's my kid up howling. Oh, my ear hurts. Four o'clock in the morning, we're sitting there in the ER because I couldn't, I, there's no way I'm going to let her suffer. So we get to the ER and the doctor there, after waiting forever in an empty ER room finally shows up. I think they woke him up or something. I don't know. But um, he comes in, looks at her and says, well, I'm going to give you some Valium for that. And you can pick up this prescription tomorrow and that'll take care of that ear. We'll put her on an antibiotic. And I looked at him and I went, she's 11 and, and I'm 40 something, 44. I've never had a Valium in my life. And you're going to give my 11 year old Valium for swimmer's ear? I don't think so. I know what she needs. It's a raglan drops and an antibiotic. How about you get me the drops? Well, this was my third child. I was a little bit more experienced and been through this. So I knew the answers to say, and that little man scurried the hell out of there, and I never saw him again. And I got my aragolin drops and the antibiotic and went about our way. And the nurse came in and went, looked at Grace flat out and said, your mom's doing the right thing. She's a good mom. And as soon as we got the drops in, her ear quit hurting and she was a happy camper and I didn't have to sit up and worry about her being overdosed on Valium, for God's sake. He wanted to prescribe my 11-year-old daughter Valium for swimmers here. Well, I just wanted to address her pain. I'm like, you're doing that at 11. What are you going to do when she's 20? So that's a big part of the problem with traditional health care that I see going on today. And that happened, well, seven years ago. And it really, really bothers me. I was thinking to myself, and I, I did a big post on it on my Colorado Connect blog after that happened too, because I was very, very disturbed that for swimmer's ear, my daughter was being prescribed Valium. So please, always be cautious when you go to the doctor. If it's somebody new that you don't know, ask questions. Don't be afraid. You're paying them. Okay, you're paying them for their service. So get rid of the whole doctor, I'm an elite god, I'm better than you thing. They can just back that truck up. Money's coming from me. You can sit down. And then when you get in there too, make a list of every single question that you have. <coughs> and with every single question that you have, you don't get out of that doctor's office until you have a check mark next to him. And once you get that check mark next to him, then you can get that taken care of. But don't leave that office until every question is checked off, okay? And that's just the way it's got to be. Hey, Michelle, um, I see you're commenting, and please message me after the live video, okay? That, that, that's just not appropriate for what's going on at this time right now. And I'm sorry I haven't been in touch. I have been extremely busy. And, and there's a big client base. So I will be in touch. Anyway, to finalize, we're down to, we have about a half an hour left. And so all of my long-term watchers are getting their wild orange samples. Um, my top sharer, if anybody remembers, share it from Terpene Healer so I can track. And I'm going to turn it off by Sunday night at midnight. Monday morning, I'm going to go count and see how many shares are out there. And whoever is my top share is going to go and get, I'll make them their own personally developed 250 milligram CBD tincture. Okay? So let's see what else we got going on in here. Oh, yeah, I've heard about that doping people up on Ativan. And that's just to get you out of their office and get you out of there. Yeah.
Yeah, and Leanna said, belly and the brain, the computer and the engine. That's exactly right. Clean eating definitely helps with um, IBS, most certainly. And let's define clean eating, too. Because a lot of people, they're like, clean eating, what does that mean? So, Tasha, if you could pop in there, what does clean eating mean to you? And then um, I'll tell you a definition that I heard from another fella. <laughs> At Passover, we're sitting around the table, and... You know, people are like, well, what do you do for your health? How do you know? And he says, well, I do. I practice clean eating. And they said, well, what's that? And he says, I don't eat red meat. So <laughs> what, what does that mean? Is that clean eating? What is the definition of clean eating? And so um, is it just, and see that Tosh is nailing it right now. No processed foods is a big deal. You don't want to be putting any of those chemicals from processed foods into your body to define clean eating. No processed foods. A lot of fresh, raw vegetables, steam stuff. You can still eat red meat, but you want to make it a red, a lean red meat. Um, that pretty much, if you're going to eat clean, you're going to get rid of bacon because there's a lot of nitrates in bacon. So you can't say clean eating and bacon go well together. <laughs> Don't shoot the messenger. And then, um, what else goes along with that? You can eat clean without having to go and blow a ton of money at the whole food stores or the real food stores or organic food stores. Um, there are some great organic products that are in your regular grocery stores. And then also farmer's markets and um, sugars. Right, Tasha just brought it up too. No white sugars and lean meats. So if you keep in mind a white sugar is like your classic, um, your white table sugar that you see that's been processed and bleached, it's no longer at that point a raw sugar. So raw sugars are really the way that you want to go. Um, your stevia is a plant sugar that a lot of people can get away with. And utilize as one of the better ones as well as the raw cane sugars and um, you know a lot of people turned a lot to the agaves and me personally I can't do agave it's just way too sweet and it really comes across way too sweet and whole grains not white especially with bread <laughs> and then I see here a comment back I Clean eating. I ain't giving up my steak. Yeah, well, I don't give up my steak either. And then, yeah, the sugars are stevie, raw honey, pure maple syrup. And um, another thing to look up when you're talking about sugars that a lot of people don't know about, and I did the Atkins diet, plus I dealt with a lot of diabetics. I really got to get back on that Atkins myself. But um, the glycemic index, G-L-Y-C-E-M-I-C, Glycemic index, with the glycemic index, that is what, it tells you how um, sugars affect your blood and your bloodstream. And so that's why the lower the carbs are, the less it's going to affect your glycemic index. When you have the big high peaks and fluctuations and peaks and fluctuations up and down like that from the sugar peaks, that's not good for your metabolism and for getting weight off your body. You need to keep it steady so you're constantly burning. When you have that sugar peak and then you crash and peak and crash, you know, those are, are things that everything we're always looking for balance. We're looking for balance with our blood sugar. We're looking for balance with weight. We're looking for balance with our health, brain and belly, and all of those type of things. So, I eat clean and love my steak. Yes, perfect answer. So, uh, I'm going to quit looking at the comments. Migraines. Just had a question about migraines. And without saying the person's name, what was the question? Their daughters? Her daughter is um, having a lot of migraines and suffering, and she hates to see her suffer from it. Any info she would thank you for? Um, migraine sufferers definitely contact me off-site. 
and off of this because I'd like to do some consulting and find out what type of migraine as well. Um, but one thing I will bring up here that I talked about previously that I thought was fantastic. And I know I have an autistic client that I've been working with for over a year now. And um, they swear by Butterbur for her. And they're completely holistic. They are not doing any um, big pharma meds whatsoever. Now, if you remember, I brought up this magazine last week, the Nature's Best Remedies from National Geographic. It's supposed to still be on the stands until May 4th. So you can still go find this beautiful magazine out there or go look it up on National Geographic site. But in here they talk about Butterbur. And here they talk about an allergy medication, which is interesting to me. Or it's all around allergy stopper. But um, my one autistic client, they've used Butterbur for her forever for her migraines with great success. And that's taking it in a capsule internally and then they also make tea. And then here's another one that is fantastic, is Feverfew. And then also, one thing, in Irvin and I studying and traveling all around the country, we get to where um, we've talked to thousands of patients, and I, I've talked to thousands of patients. And um, migraine sufferers, that's just one of the toughest ones because... 45% THC works for them. 45% absolutely does not work better for them. It makes it worse. And the other 10% is completely unknown. So it's trial and error yet again. But that's also why migraine sufferers, I like to talk to them and find out exactly what's going on. Do we have a premonition? That type of stuff. Um, I actually had a lineman that, in Montana that he retired after 30 years of being a lineman, but the only way he could even work that long being a lineman at that high elevation like he did and retired doing that, and he was a cluster, cluster migraine sufferer all of his life, psilocybin mushrooms. Not legal, but he grew them and kept them in his closet and had the littlest piece of that every day and never suffered a headache. When he went without, he suffered. And he had cluster migraines all the time. So. Daith piercing? I'm going to have to look that up. Daith piercing for migraines was the best. And, oh, yeah. Um, Leanne had mentioned alkaline-based diet. Now, also, alkaline-based diet is something that's really important to look into for cancer patients. Um, cancer does not like an alkaline environment. I think that's what it is. But you definitely want to adjust your diet and be looking at that, especially if you have a cancer diagnosis. Um, and I have a nutritionist that I refer people to that for all the time. Bear with me. I'm just trying to check messages before we log off here too because we won't be back for another week and then we still have 15 minutes left. And Katie says magnesium helped big time. So that must have been for migraines too with the magnesium. Okay. Dun, dun, dun. I can't believe we only have 15 minutes left. That's shocking to me. What haven't I put my hands on yet tonight? Oh, we were just talking about cancer. <coughs> and I wanted to bring this up because it just came in the mail today. Um, in the beginning of the show, I was talking about <coughs> how um, patient navigation is what I do with the, in the cannabis world. And where that came from is from cancer. The cancer world has patient navigators all through it. So I really consider a lot of what I do to be patient navigation. I help patients talk to their families, talk to their doctors, look at their meds, evaluate what's going on, and get through the process of trying to heal themselves. So for a long time I volunteered at the American Cancer Society right here in Lauderdale, or in uh, Fort Lauderdale, and um, I wound up getting subscribed to Conquer Magazine which is the patient voice. And this is a magazine that comes out for cancer patients. And what I really like about what they do with this magazine, well, I have complaints too, but they do give tips and points on like, this just came today. 
Reduce cancer risk with your fork. It's good to see that. Now, when the first issues came out, you know, we still have a lot of work to do in this industry and in educating people about how cannabis can heal in this department, in this area. Um, but I, I'm just so frustrated to see all of the meds that are pushed in these uh, cancer magazines as well. And if you go out there and if you look up, if you see this magazine, I'll just open it right now because I haven't, I, seriously, I just got it in the mouth today. But I will bet you right now, here, I'm opening it right now on the spot. And it feels like it's got something in it. And what I'm going to point out is the drug ads. Okay, so I got three subscription cards, which is fine. That's great. And I'll share those with people. But one thing that I got from these guys was so full of ads, I actually wrote to them and went, this is crazy. So here's a full page, two page spread for, for advertising for that. When I had a magazine and sold these type of ads, that's not cheap for the double page spread like that. that that's not cheap at all. That, that's upwards of three grand right there just for that, for one issue. And now, you know, I know these, these guys need to make money to be able to do what they're doing, but it looks like they've gotten better. So this, I'm only seeing two big ads so far. The kid has to call right before the show's done. But it is a good magazine, and what I do like about some of the stories that, that they put in here is they talk about all the different kinds of cancer. And then, um, like here they're talking about multiple myeloma, lung cancer, all sorts of different resources. Um, reduce your cancer risk with your fork, and they talk about all the different foods the different berries being rich in antioxidants. So we are getting back, they're, they're getting into some of those things where they can really help people, which is really good, and I do appreciate that going on. And then, um, but it's the drug ads that kill me, because apparently that's the only way they can make money. And so, oh, that's a support, no. It's still pharmaceutical companies of Johnson & Johnson. So, I'm hoping we can get past the whole, I hope we can come up with some kind of magazine like this for the cannabis world that's not fueled by drug ads, which I don't think it would be able to be fueled by drug ads because <laughs> I wouldn't take them when I published my magazine. I, I was kind of picky about my advertisers. So, Okay, we're down to, we have 13 minutes left. Any hot topics anybody wants to discuss, talk about, bring up, something I didn't cover, I started a question on something. For viewers who weren't on here before, this is something I like to repeat all the time. I don't know if you can see that. Er, get it over here. It's backwards, but that is black pepper. Now, black pepper I call stoner rescue because I actually, um, black pepper totally, you know, it's beta caryophylline there again, but it blocks that CB1 receptor and act as an antagonist for the CB2. So in a story that I told last week, and I'll tell it again, um, last year Irvin and I were in uh, Berkeley for the Patients Out of Time conference, and... <coughs> We were at the after party with all of the doctors and the lawyers and the nurses and everybody from patients at a time. And there was a, an, an attorney there, and it was all the people who had helped start Prop 215 like 20, 25 years ago. So it was kind of like a celebratory anniversary party too. So we, we get there, and one of the attorneys that was all involved for years is sitting there, and he's holding the bucket and gacking his brains out in it. I'm like, oh, buddy, what's up with you, cowboy? And they said, oh... He liked Mike's brownies too much. He's just got to ride that pony. And I'm like, no, he doesn't. And he perks up and looks at me like, you can help me. And I'm like, yeah, hey, somebody grab, get me a, a glass of water with two ounces of water in it and half a teaspoon of black pepper. The finer the grind, the better. And so they run in the house and as they go in to get the water and the pepper, I'm explaining to him, I want you to put this in your mouth, rinse and spit, rinse and spit. It's not going to be comfortable. It's not going to be pleasant, but it's going to stop what's going on right now, and you're going to quit puking. 
He's like, whatever it takes, just stop this, because he was so miserable. And so she comes back, and I give him the cup, and as I'm explaining to her what was going on about the rinse and spit and rinse and spit, um, I hear a gulp, and he says, it's working, and gulp, gulp, gulp. He gulps it all down, and within five minutes, well, actually, the puking stopped immediately, and within five minutes, he was pretty much right as rain, comfortably numb, which is where he wanted to be, and very happy about it. The whole puking thing was over and done. We were done with all of that, and, and no more of that was going on. And he could walk away and have a better day. But here I was at the Patients Out of Time conference, and a lot of people just had no idea that you could stop a psychoactive, a psychoactive effect like that, back him off from his puking and get him comfortable, and let him go on and have a good night for the rest of the night instead of being miserable. And it's really important that we share that information because there's so many people that are coming into this and brand new and just learning about cannabis. They get a hold of the wrong product and eat too much of it or, you know, hey, this is really good and let's eat all these cookies or gummies or whatever and then they're high out of their mind and they'll never try it again because they had a bad experience. So... I don't want to see that happen, and that's why it's important. People need to know. Black pepper, and if you have a black pepper essential oil like this, I've actually waved it under people's noses and used it like a smelling salt. I don't know about, um, Tasha asked if you can use black pepper for a, a psych medication reaction, and I don't know about that. I'd have to study up. A lot of times what we're talking about and what we're studying here, this is receptor science. So unless I know what that med is and what receptors are work, it's working on and how it's working on those receptors, I can't answer that honestly unless it's one I've researched pri previously. So message me that and we'll do some homework and see what we can find out. But um, I don't know. I haven't tried that with any of the chemical medications that are out there. I just know it works fantastic for cannabis and Stoner Rescue. So eight minutes. Eight minutes. We have some winners that are going on. And then we have a question here. Which oil will help restless leg? So I'm going to look that up because I know I would probably want to slap some deep blue on it right away because that's good for muscles. But we also want to calm those muscles and keep them from flipping out and jumping all over the place. And so the first one that comes to mind to me is either rosemary or vetiver, and I'm going to go look both of those up really quick. No, not rosemary. Let me look at the vetiver. And I also have clinical books that I have at home, so I can look a lot of that stuff up. Nope. Oh, you want an antispasmodic. So, let me go see what's in there. I think peppermint may be a good one because that is very calming. Look at another one here. Um, peppermint, lavender, majorum, vepiter, lemongrass. Roman chamomile, frankincense, and ginger. Okay, say it again. I'm going to have tech support say because she went and Googled it while I'm looking in the book. Say it louder, Terry. Peppermint, lavender. Peppermint, lavender. Majorum. Marjoram. Marjoram. <laughs> Vetiver. Vetiver. Lemongrass. Lemongrass. Roman chamomile. Roman chamomile. Frankincense. Frankincense, of course. Ginger. Anti ginger. Is that it? Yep. Yeah. Well, they said there's more, but... And it probably says there's more, but those are the main... Um, it affects the one main ones. ten people. And the restless leg syndrome affects one, one in ten people. Children, too. But that's also another thing you can do, too. And for people who are really getting into essential oils, one thing where I learned a lot... Dr. Josh Axe actually has a lot of great stuff on YouTube about essential oils. So I, I'm not completely nuts about the guy. After I watch him for so long, he kind of makes me crazy. But um, 
that's just me. <laughs> but he does have a lot of very valuable information. So be sure and go look up Dr. Josh Axe and then um, read up on, uh, look for on YouTube his essential oil information. He's got great information out there on a lot of essential oils, the basic ones to start, and different types of uh, applications as well. That's who I was talking about was Dr. Axe, Dr. Josh Axe. Do you want me to give, me, give the website? Because it's got like remedies to do massages, baths, everything. Um, I'll link some of those. I'll put the Dr. Josh link up in the comments when I go through and research after I get okay. home. And I would not say restless leg is the same as leg cramps. No, there's a question. Is restless leg the same as leg cramps? And no, I would say no. Um, restless leg is where your muscles are flopping around uncontrollably. And that happens, and um, you see people will sit and they'll have this going with their leg, and I can see how my shoulder's going. They'll be twitching that leg all the time, too, and they can't stop it. It's more something like that. Leg cramps, Irvin has leg cramps, and they get him up in the middle of the night, and he has to stand up and stretch his uh, leg and his foot to get rid of the cramp. One of the best things to help with leg cramps, magnesium. Eat your bananas. Eat a banana every day, and you're going to help with those leg cramps. So, uh, you know, a lot of this stuff, a lot of stuff we can treat with food. What you're putting in your body is what's going to heal you, whether it be an essential oil, food, CBD, or THC. So, but what I like to do is I roll up. I start with the food and the essential oils, and then I go to CBD because it's legal everywhere and also more cost effective. And then we evaluate and look at THC. Because a lot of times THC, you have to get carded in the state where you're at if it's not legal. There's expenses with that. Sourcing is always an issue and the legality of that sourcing. So, Oh, goody. I had somebody got their mail. So, hooray. Wheatgrass shot. Okay, do I know anything or have any thoughts on wheatgrass shots, juice, or ginger shots? I have heard great things about both of them. I've experienced ginger myself. I love ginger. Ginger is very, very good for you and anti-inflammatory. Wheatgrass also has great benefit. So I would read up on that, but yeah, they're really good. Just be sure you're getting it from a fresh source. You don't want anything that's aged forever on a shelf. And a lot of times you can juice that and make it at home yourself and get the best benefit. So Google it and read it and look it up and make a YouTube video and put it out there. If, if there isn't one out there, so then everybody else will know. But great Three feedback, minutes. too. I've really appreciated that from people. What's that, Terry? Three more minutes. We're down to our last three minutes, and I really want to thank everybody for tuning in and watching. It's been really nice to have you guys here, and I really appreciate your viewership. That's awesome. As I explained in the beginning of the video, this will be out there. Um, Sunday night's the cutoff. Sunday at midnight, Monday morning, I'll be getting up and looking at who my lead sharer is. And we'll be getting that out there. To people who come in and watch this video after, I hope you made it all the way to the end. Thank you for watching. I really, really appreciate it. And please, um, send me your people with problems who need help. That's what I'm here for. And I'll work really hard to be sure that we get them taken care of. And dial in meds just for them. And try to make a bunch of solutions in in one, one remedy instead of like 14 different pills for one condition so thank you my great love to all it's 828 anybody else last minute questions two minutes oh no i'll save that for next time um my hour-long watchers be sure you send me addresses so i can get these off in the mail to you Want to get the wild orange out? Rebecca wants to know if leg cramps are the same thing as restless leg syndrome. No, I covered that already. Okay, sorry. So we were talking about um, eating a banana for magnesium. So, thank you, everybody. I'm so glad you tuned in. Please share. Bring more next week. Come sit in a seat in person. We'll get her done. Thanks so much. You have a great night. Terpene Healer, out.